Hi, I'm Sakura from Japan. I never met my dad, and I've always just lived with my billionaire mom and my twin sister Yumi. And for as long as I can remember, Yumi has been a crazy, jealous pain in my butt. Once when I was five, mom was so impressed with a painting I'd made, she had it framed. Later that night, I woke up to a sound and I screamed. My favorite doll was covered with paint and it was hanging by its neck from the ceiling. OMG, <laughs> Yumi was insane and she just got worse. Anytime I was doing better than her at anything, she'd act out viciously and mom was totally blind to it. But in the ninth grade, Yumi really crossed a line. Mom was hosting a grand party on her new yacht. When I woke up that morning, I shrieked at my reflection. I had a terrible haircut and a mustache drawn on my face. The marker wouldn't even wash off. When I went screaming to mom, she started laughing and said it was just a silly joke. But sweetie, you can't come looking like this to the party. That would be embarrassing for me. I was furious. When they'd left, I snuck into Yumi's room, opened her Facebook and posted a status. I'm pregnant, everyone. Can't wait to get all round and fat. When Yumi found out later that night, she attacked me in my sleep. Mom came running at the noise and was so mad when she found out what I'd done. My reputation is ruined. I can't live here anymore. Do something, Mom. Next thing I knew, our bags were packed and we were moving to freaking New York. My new school seemed bigger than the White House. And unlike my strict school in Japan, it seemed like everyone could wear or do whatever they wanted here. As we were walking down the corridor, everyone was looking at us and whispering. Suddenly, I heard someone screaming behind me. Hey, wait, are you the real life Akko from Luna Academy? OMG, somebody pinch me. Oh yeah, you guys look exactly like anime characters. You're hot. What were they talking about? Whatever was going on, it seemed like we'd just become the princesses of the school in minutes. Yeah, even me. I was reading in the library one day when a cute senior Dylan came and sat next to me. And he just asked me out. That was weird. But I'd heard Yumi say that she had a crush on him. So I said yes. And suddenly, we were the hottest new couple in school. I was already imagining us as prom king and queen, and I could see Yumi burning up. A month later, Dylan came to my place one day and immediately pulled me in for a kiss. Happy Valentine's Day, babe. I got a present for you. Oh no, I'd completely forgotten about it. He told me to close my eyes and hold out my hand. A rock? Yeah, cause you rock my world, babe. What'd you get for me? I ran to my drawer and took out a tacky heart necklace I'd had since I was a kid. Cause you stole my heart, babe. And he looked pretty happy. Wow, boys were dumb. A couple of weeks later, it was Dylan's birthday party and I went over to his place all dressed up. When I finally found him in the crowd, I was shocked to see him kissing a girl. Oh my God, the girl was freaking Yumi. I pulled him from the back of his shirt. Hey, why are you kissing her? We're sisters, but we look nothing alike, you jerk. Yumi just grinned at me like a moron and hung on to him even tighter. Why are you getting so worked up? Don't you know this is common here? We date many girls. That's just our culture. Don't make him choose between us, Sakura. You know I'll always win. I charged straight at Dylan and pushed him into the fountain. Then I pounced on Yumi, and we found ourselves rolling around on the ground, pulling each other's hair out. Dylan called security and had me thrown out. Gosh, I couldn't wait to tell mom about her horrible little princess. But when I got home, I was shocked when the servants told me that mom was in the hospital. She'd had a stroke. I rushed to the hospital, and mom weakly opened her eyes when she saw me. You me? No, mom. It's me, Sakura. Just listen. I should have told you both sooner. You girls, one of you is adopted. What are you saying, mom? The, the heart necklace. You took it from me as a kid. It has the answer. The necklace? The one I gave to the jerk Dylan? Just as her eyes started to close, the doctor pushed me outside. And a few moments later, they told me she was in a coma. My whole world had suddenly turned upside down. My mom was in a coma? One of us was freaking adopted. Of course, Yumi was devastated by mom's news, but I didn't tell her what mom had said. I had to find out the truth myself first. 
The next day in school, I found Dylan in the boys' locker room and I told him I wanted my necklace back. Sure, I'll think about it, but only if you give me my kisses back. Dylan, just shut up and give it back or else. Jeez, calm down. I gave that ugly thing to some girl named Melinda. I think she's moved to England now. What? I got so mad. I pounced on him and started pulling his ears. If I don't find the necklace, I swear I will hunt you down and kick your butt. Dylan screamed like a little girl and his buddies had to drag me out. That night, I tracked Melinda down on Instagram and booked my ticket. I left without a word to Yumi and found myself flying across the Atlantic in search of that stupid necklace. When I got to Melinda's place, there was a wedding happening in the garden, and the servant said the young miss was getting married. I rushed straight into the ceremony as the couple were exchanging their vows, and I yelled, Give me my mom's necklace, Melinda, or your marriage will be doomed. As everyone stared at me, Melinda stepped out from the audience and pulled me aside angrily. Who are you? I don't remember inviting you to my sister's wedding. When I told her everything, she looked at me like I was crazy. I gave that necklace to my maid. She just moved to Scotland, but you can get there by train in a few hours. Oh my God! When I finally reached the address she'd given me, I saw a couple of kids playing outside and one of them was wearing my necklace. I felt terrible for what I was about to do, but I had to. I went up to the little girl and said, your necklace is so lovely. Can I try it? No, leave me alone, Dumbo. So I snatched the necklace and I ran like there were wild dogs chasing me. Finally, I was about to find out the truth. With my heart beating furiously, I opened the locket and what the freaking fish? It was just a picture of mom holding two babies, me and Yumi. What was this supposed to mean? I took out the picture and turned it over. Sakura, born on 18th September. Yumi, adopted two days later. What? Yumi was adopted? This was unbelievable. As the shock wore off, I couldn't help smiling. For a brief minute, I wanted to put this up everywhere on Facebook and Instagram, but then I decided, I wanted to see Yumi's reaction myself. I rushed home on the first flight I could get and barged into the house. Oh, Yumi, where are you? I've got a surprise for you. I found her sitting on mom's bed, holding a picture frame and sobbing. She turned around to me and said, what if mom never comes back to us, Sakura? I feel so lost without her. My heart melted and I ran to hug her. She'll be fine. The doctor said she will. And you have me. As Yumi hugged me tight, I decided I wasn't going to tell her what I discovered. It would be devastating, and mom would want me to take care of her, so that's what I was gonna do. Yumi and I were getting along better than ever before, but one day when I walked into the cafeteria, I was shocked to see Dylan standing on a table, holding a hand out to Yumi. I love you, babe. I know that I've let you down, but is it too late to say sorry now? Yumi took his hand and climbed onto the table, and everyone cheered and clapped as they kissed. I marched over furiously and pulled Dylan to the ground. Hey jerk, I saw you kissing a girl just yesterday, so get away from my sister. Sakura, are you crazy? You can't treat my boyfriend like that. And I know he kissed someone. He just said he's sorry, okay? He made a mistake. That's a mistake he makes every day. Yumi, I swear, I just want what's best for you. Break up with him. Babe. Don't listen to her. She's just jealous. Of what? A stupid jerk? No, Sakura. You're jealous of me. You know everyone loves me more. The kids at school, Dylan, even mom. And before I knew it, the most horrible words slipped out of my mouth. You wish, Yumi. You wish everyone loved you better, but the truth is, you aren't even mom's kid. You're adopted. She only treated you better because she probably felt sorry for your poor orphan butt. With that, I threw the necklace at Yumi's shocked face in front of everyone and stormed out. As my anger cooled off, I realized what a terrible thing I'd done. So I rushed home to apologize, but Yumi was nowhere to be found. I checked her Instagram and saw she'd posted a picture with her friends at a frozen lake behind the school. I grabbed my skates and rushed out. Yumi wasn't good at skating at all. When I got there, I saw Dylan and his stupid gang going ahead while Yumi struggled behind them, tripping again and again. She called for Dylan's help, 
but he just put his arms around a pretty blonde girl and yelled back, Keep up, babe, or I'll just kiss another girl. And they all skated away <laughs> laughing. The jerks. As I was trying to catch up to her, suddenly I heard a crack. To my horror, I saw the ice beneath Yumi collapse, and she went in. Help! Somebody help me! Oh my god, Yumi, I'm coming! When I got close, I threw myself down on the ice and grabbed her hands. I pulled her with all my might, and she came out shocked and shivering. I quickly took her back home and covered her up with blankets. Yumi, I'm so sorry for what I said. That was such an awful way to tell you about the adoption. Sakura, I've known about that for a really long time. I once overheard mom talking to someone. She lost your real twin sister at birth, and I turned up as an abandoned baby at the hospital the same day. So she decided to adopt me. Maybe that's why I've always fought you so hard for mom's love. I knew I wasn't her real daughter. And I'm sorry for everything too. You saved my life today. You are my real sister. I'd jump in a thousand lakes and kick a hundred butts for you. And man, am I gonna kick Dylan's butt. I filed a police complaint against Dylan and his friends for leaving my sister in extreme danger. And they were in a world of trouble. A few days later, we got a call from the hospital saying mom was awake. We threw our arms around her the minute we saw her. And I told mom I'd found the answer in the necklace. I always felt you loved Yumi more. And maybe it's true, isn't it? You just got me, but you chose Yumi to be your daughter. Mom took my hand and said tearfully, Sakura, I'm so sorry I made you feel that way. Maybe I felt more protective of Yumi because I never wanted her to feel like she wasn't mine. But I chose to have you both, and I love you just the same. As we all hugged and cried, I knew the three of us were going to be just fine. I am not the one to believe in luck, but kept on thinking about the two miracles that happened this morning. First, I woke up before my first alarm, and my mom was like, who are you? I couldn't believe it either. I always sleep late at night because of reading romance novels. Every morning was like a battlefield, and my enemies were my alarm clock and my mom, and I always ended up getting out of bed after the 20th snooze of my alarm. And second was the delivery package that was sitting in front of our door. It was a hard copy of the latest novel of my favorite author. I have been trying to get her attention for the last five years by sending her messages through her email, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, Facebook, and finally she noticed me. Moments later, my dad pulled over to a grocery store to buy something, so I waited inside the car and put my earphones on. I opened TikTok to see if my imaginary boyfriend, Nate, has a new video. I can't stop watching them. He's like the dream guy of every girl out there. Those crystal blue eyes, curly blonde hair, and his voice. He has this deep, alluring voice that I could listen to forever. He also dances like a pro and a cute bear at the same time. He is so perfect, and I wish that I could see him in person someday. I had rewatched 50 of his TikTok videos when I realized that my dad was taking so long in the store. What is he doing in there? He only planned to buy gum. I couldn't afford to be late in my first class, and our scary teacher humiliates students who are late. I decided to go out of the car to check on what dad was doing now. I was about to reach the entrance door when I slipped on something. I fell forward to the door, pushed it hard until it opened, and hit someone's hand. I then heard something dropped on the floor, along with my body. Cringing in pain, I noticed a gun resting on the floor, just a few inches from me. I took it and rolled over to my back, only to see a masked robber holding a lady as his hostage. I looked around and whoa, what in the world is happening? Everyone, including my dad, were all gathered up one side with their arms raised. Give me my gun! The robber screamed and lunged at me. My heart was pounding so hard in my chest as I dodged him. I then aimed the gun towards him in an awkward way. He raised both of his hands up in surrender. The cashier then took the chance to call the police, and moments later, police sirens started echoing outside. I couldn't believe that I was witnessing the arrest of a criminal in person. Police and FBI agents surrounded me and my dad, asking questions about the incident. Everything happened so fast, and it was so overwhelming. The staff and customers kept thanking me for what I had done, and the police started calling me a hero because that masked robber was also the serial killer who escaped prison two weeks ago. 
Inside the car, my dad kept on telling me that I was the best daughter in the whole world, but everything hadn't sunk in yet. It was a fantastic experience, but the thought of being late in my first class was distracting me. I was running late already, so I wished that there would be no traffic on the next street. Luckily, the road was empty. I was late for 15 minutes when I finally reached our school. While dashing down the hall towards my locker, everyone was looking at me as if there were green flying horses coming out of my nose. I'm a wallflower, a nobody who dreams of being the most beautiful and most popular girl in school, so I found their reactions very unusual. I opened my locker and saw a small note inserted in my notebook. My eyes flew wide open when I realized that it was a love letter. I considered this as another miracle because this was the first time that I had received such a letter. I've never had a guy admire me, ever. I closed my locker after getting some books, and the moment I turned around, I was surprised to see the cutest guys in school lining up in front of me. Hey, Betty, would you like to go to prom with me? I've always liked you. Want to be my girlfriend? What's your Snapchat? Hey, baby girl. Wait, I felt dizzy all of a sudden. Give me a minute to digest this. What are they doing? Hello there. A familiar voice made me open my eyes, and a smiling Noah Buck was the first thing I saw. Noah is my crush at school. He's handsome, smart, and athletic. You were so cool earlier. Want to come to my party later at 7? Oh, so they have already heard the news. Now I understand why everyone's giving me this attention. I stuttered when I saw him. Sh sure, Noah. I, I would love to. Great. See ya. He waved goodbye at me as he winked, and then I think my eyes just turned into hearts. I rushed to my first class with blood draining from my face and nervousness. I was imagining the smoke coming out of our teacher's nose and ears. Luckily, she didn't arrive yet. She entered the classroom the moment I settled into my seat. Talk about perfect timing. Good morning, class. Sorry I'm late. I got stuck in a traffic jam. Anyway, I have a surprise quiz for you. Oh no, I wasn't prepared for it. I was sweating with anxiousness as we answered the exam. Another unexpected thing happened after the checking. I got a perfect score! Lunchtime came and my best friend Gwen's favorite meal ran out, so we decided to eat outside. We noticed several students gathered around in front of the school, checking a red fancy sports car out that was parked on campus. Everyone was shocked, especially me, to see the driver who finally came out of the car. I blinked thrice to check if I was hallucinating, but it was indeed Nate. Girls dropped their jaws as they watched him approach me. Hey, it's Betty, right? I felt like fainting when I heard his voice. It was so disarming. He asked me out for a quick lunch and promised to bring me back to school, as he didn't want me to cut class. He told me that he got intrigued with me because of the news, and he wanted to thank me personally. You saved not only the people in that store, but the entire country from a dangerous serial killer. I felt like I was in cloud nine. He then drove me to a five-star restaurant for lunch. I kept on pinching myself to check if it was all just a dream, but everything was real. I couldn't eat properly because I was so shy and conscious of Nate's presence. He was holding a camera taking a video of us as he wanted to feature me on his next vlog. My phone then rang and I excused myself to answer it. This is the raffle that you joined three months ago. We're happy to inform you that you won $1 million and a trip to Europe, which is good for three persons. Oh my god, is this serious? Yes, just message us your full name and bank account details. I excitedly called my parents to tell them the good news. I had already told Nate about it, and we continued chit-chatting over lunch. Soon, I realized that I had already skipped my next class, which was chemistry. Nate hurriedly drove me back to school and asked me if we could hang out after my classes. I remembered Noah's party at 7, so I suggested that he should join us. My hands and teeth were shaking at the thought of those girls who ruled the school getting jealous of me. You should also do some TikTok videos with me, Nate suggested, and I became ecstatic about it. It was like a dream come true. Wait a minute. My day only started with two miracles, and now I'm losing my count. What a lucky day indeed. An idea popped into my head. I'll start testing out my luck festival. I thought about the party later and how I should look beautiful for Nate, Noah, and everyone. But how? I'm a plain Jane. Hey girl, Jessie, a fashionable student who loves doing makeup to others, approached me. I bought these new makeup sets and I would love to try them on you. I was stunned for a moment. A few seconds ago, I just wished to look pretty and there's Jessie to the rescue? She gave me a makeover during our vacant time, making me more than ready for the party tonight. Fast forward to the party, I was having a good time with Nate and the others. Everyone was treating me like I was a beautiful princess. We played a lot of games such as beer pong and car games, and as expected, I kept on winning. 
All I did was wish for it to come true. Rubbing my hands together in excitement, I decided to work it out more. I tried my luck on billiards, which I never played before. I played against these guys who were experts already. I closed my eyes and took a deep breath before striking the cue ball. Everyone shouted in amusement when I miraculously sunk all the pool balls in one strike. Unbelievable! Noah kept on giving me these drinks and my mind started to become hazy. He and Nate kept on subtly fighting for my attention. It was making me feel that I was the most beautiful girl in the world. They were both making me confused, but deep inside, I knew that I liked Nate more. Later that night, the competition between them became even more obvious, so they decided to play rock, paper, scissor, and whoever won would be my real date tonight. I secretly wished for Nate to win, and he did. Noah walked out with a sad look on his face. It's okay, Noah. You deserve a better date anyway. Someone who's naturally beautiful and not an attention seeker. I turned to the owner of The Voice. It was Megan, Noah's ex-girlfriend, who had been giving me the jealous eye since we arrived. She's the principal's daughter who still has feelings for Noah. It was so obvious. I've never been so insulted before in my life. She looked back at me with raised eyebrows and an insulting smile. And I couldn't help but wish that the lighter being played with by that guy standing next to her would just burn her beautiful blonde hair. Seconds later, it really happened. Served her right. Noah immediately came to the rescue. He was able to put the fire out before the fire could burn all the strands of her hair. Megan was furious at the guy who played with his lighter, and it ended up in a fight. Nate and I decided to leave the party that had already turned into a major commotion. He drove me home and got to meet my parents, who actually prepared a small dinner celebration for my heroic act this morning, along with Gwen, and I wasn't expecting it. My parents also invited Nate to eat with us, and he gladly obliged. We all had a good time tonight, especially me. I kept on wondering how I had gotten this lucky since I woke up this morning. I felt like I had superpowers or something. I wished that this could go on tomorrow and the next day and forever. Later that night, our black cat Jackie, who was always distant to me, slept beside me this time. It was so weird, but it made me sleep with a huge smile on my face. The next morning, I woke up way past my alarm, and my mom probably forgot to wake me up. Oh no. I remembered that our strict teacher had informed us yesterday about a long, important exam. If you fail it, you'll automatically fail her class. My dad was still sleeping. He had no work that day, but still. It was part of his routine to drive me to school. I tried waking him by splashing cold water on his face, throwing a tree on him, and flipping his bed over. But he really wouldn't wake up. Instead of wasting my time on this seemingly impossible, I just then walked my way out of our neighborhood to wait for a taxi. Suddenly, it began to rain very hard and I forgot to bring an umbrella. What timing? Where's my luck today? Did it migrate somewhere? A rushing car passed through a pool of dirty water in front of me, and I was hit by the huge splash. I contemplated whether to carry on with the dirty, wet clothes or to go back home and change. But when the taxi came, I decided to proceed. Inside the taxi, I vigorously wished for some miracles to happen again today. Like Nate visiting me at school again, or my strict teacher getting absent today. When I entered our school building, everyone was looking at me with disgust. The first class was already dismissed by the time I reached the classroom. Great. I missed the long, important quiz. I checked my phone to see if Nate had left a message for me. But then I realized that he didn't actually ask for my number. Maybe he had forgotten to ask me. Everyone then started treating me like nothing happened yesterday. This is just like any other day. Am I back to being a wallflower? Gwen then came up to me and told me what she had found out. Nate's nanny was actually the hostage in the store yesterday. That's why he was very thankful to me. Well, that makes sense. Later that day, I checked the raffle that I had won yesterday to see further details, but I noticed the text message saying that the number who contacted me was actually a scam. I felt like every bad luck that I suffered today was like a boulder that was piling up on my head. Yesterday, I wasn't able to attend my chemistry class because of my lunch with Nate, making me clueless about our activity today in the laboratory. I mixed the wrong chemicals, leading to a small fire in the room, which led me to an hour of detention. Great, another imaginary boulder fell on me. When then informed me that Nate had already uploaded his latest vlog. I immediately checked it and was disappointed to know that I was only featured for like 10 seconds. And it was footage of me eating pasta awkwardly in front of him. The rest of it was about his model girlfriend and how they were madly in love with each other. Nate even addressed me as a random high school student who saved the day by clumsily stopping a robbery. She just got lucky, he mentioned with an insulting smirk. I checked the comments and people were laughing at me instead of praising me. 
I needed someone to talk to about my heartbreak, so I called Gwen. Come on, Betty, don't you get it? He just used you for views and more fame because the robbery was the viral topic yesterday. She might be right, but I have to make a wish for the last time. I have to confirm if my luck had indeed worn out. I decided to wait until midnight for Nate to contact me. I waited and waited while listening to every tick of the clock. Midnight finally came, and all I could do was sigh in frustration. I took a pen, and while smiling, I scribbled down in my diary. For one day, I was the luckiest